alkali metals, that's from hydrogen down, really lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, down there. There's a couple things to know about these. One, flame colors. So these all have a uh, NS1 electron configuration. Like 1s1, or really 2s1, 3s1, 4s1, etc. With a little bit of energy, you can bump that electron up to the p level, the np1. That change in energy matches wavelengths of visible light, just like the transition metals. So that will give off color. Whenever you put these metals under a flame, they're colorful. So these are also metals you might see in fireworks, like if you watched the show recently. Uh, bonding. The NS1, they're really weak bonding. So these are relatively weak. That makes these metals malleable and not as strong. Because uh, there's only one electron, the uh, and, uh, NS1 electron. What does that mean for physical properties? The following, you might want to note these down. They're low density. They're actually soft, kind of like butter. Uh, you can actually cut these metals with a, a butter knife. Uh, they're low melting point. They'll float on water, they're so low density. Okay, uh, a couple interesting things about them. Oh, one more thing about those NS1s. They're easily oxidized, easily oxidized. So, uh, if you had a chunk of sodium and you tossed it into a lake, like just something about this size, the size of your fist would make a huge explosion in the, in the lake. Uh, because they're just so easily oxidized, reacting with water, reacting with oxygen. Um, very, very explosive. Okay. Uh, one interesting application uh, is soap. So one example, interesting application is soap. Anybody watch Fight Club? <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Fight Club, what they did, the main production uh, that Edward Norton and Brad Pitt had going on was a soap production. And they would uh, burglarize these uh, liposuction clinics to get fat. And then what did they add to the fat? Lye, which is sodium hydroxide. So uh, fat plus uh, the sodium hydroxide will make uh, glycerol, which is also an explosive, uh, or can be changed into explosive, and crude soap. Uh, which I'd like to draw a little example of crude soap here so you can see what it is. CH3, CH2, 14. So it's really long. CO2 minus Na plus. So without, uh, now in OCHEM you might make soap. Now without cleaning it, uh, it's a little harsh on the skin because you've got to get rid of the base from it. But this is crude soap here. That's essentially how all you need is fat like Crisco, vegetable oil, whatever, any sort of fat-ish sort of stuff will work. Uh, and what this is, it has a non-polar side on the left and the polar side on the right. And this is going to be drawn out on my diagram like a little pin. The polar side on the right, non-polar on the left. And this is what it does. It, if oil is a little droplet, like this, it sticks in like a pin. So the non, oil is nonpolar, the pin side of the soap is nonpolar. Here's the polar side. So the nice thing about soap, since it's polar and nonpolar, the nonpolar side attacks the oil, and the uh, polar side, and because water is poil, uh, polar, carries it off in the water. So that's why you use soap to get rid of the dirt on your hands, because the non-polar side attacks the dirt, and the polar side 
uh, makes it uh, salient in water so it can be carried out by the water. That's soap. Uh, let me say a little bit about hydrogen. Hydrogen's at the very top. I noted earlier that the ones at the top have unique properties, so I'm especially going to talk about hydrogen uh, as kind of unique out of all the stuff I just said. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron. It has very few similarities to anything uh, anywhere in the periodic table. Of all the atoms in the universe, 89% is hydrogen. So hydrogen is hands down the most abundant atom in the universe. It's so light, if you would release it, if I had it contained and I released it right here, it would go out of this classroom, out of the atmosphere, and go out into space. That's how light it is. Uh, it's colorless, odorless, tasteless. So it's not really perceivable by us. Uh, there are some industrial re reactions, kind of combustion sort of reactions that make hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen can become a liquid at uh, 20 Kelvin, so you can make hydrogen liquid, and that's by taking advantage of the London forces. Those are the uh, non-permanent uh, temporary dipoles uh, within any atom. It has a tenth the density of water, so it's really light. Uh, and the space shuttle, I, I think I have to draw a picture of this. Uh, it has this big thing, and then here's the plane part of the space shuttle. In the space shuttle, you have O2 and H2. And that's what makes it take off. It's a oxidation sort of fuel cell sort of reaction. Uh, and all that big hunk of thing that the space shuttle is attached to when you see it take off, that's all fuel. And it's all liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Very flammable when they react. <laughs>